Welcome, Wilberforce family and friends, the Wilberforce alums podcast. Thank you for joining me for season two, episode three of Wilberforce alums podcast. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and to give us a thumbs up so we can continue to bring you Wilberforce alums podcast. Now we will get to our guest for this particular episode right after this short break. Thank you and see you then. Welcome my Wilberforce friends to season two, episode three of Wilberforce alums podcast. Uh, again, as usual, just don't forget to hit subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you like what you hear. Well, today in this episode, episode three, we're going to be talking to some staunch Wilberforceans on campus, back on campus, if you will. We'll be talking to uh, Natalie Coles, who is the Vice President of uh, Institutional De uh, Advancement, and uh, Dr. Albert Bailey who is back on campus, but this time he's on campus as the Director of Alumni Affairs and a graduate of 2005. We welcome them to the Wilberforce Alums Podcast. I'll start off with uh, uh, Ms. Natalie Coles to give us an introduction, a little background information, and then we'll throw it over there to uh, Dr. Albert Bailey. So, Ms. Coles, if you will. Yeah, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me on the podcast. Great to be able to speak with all of our alums. I know that you all do so much for good old WU. So thank you for your commitment and dedication. Um, I have been with the university just over a year um, in, a, in my formal capacity, but I'm very fortunate that for over eight years, I worked for the United Negro College Fund and got a lot of opportunity to come and sit with your presidents over the years, all the way back to um, uh, Patricia Hardaway, I think, was the first president that I worked with. So I've been around the community for some time, really fell in love with this campus. And I remember going back and it was my third or fourth visit uh, to my assistant saying, you know, one day I will marry the woman for it. And uh, I'm really happy to be serving you all in this role and this capacity and to bring, you know, over 20 years of advanced experience that I carry. I've been fortunate to learn from some of the best to bring that here to Woman for it. Um, so as we're putting together a professional advancement team who are local and committed to the work, Dr. Bailey is someone that we just had to have on the team. He brings incredible enthusiasm, a fresh perspective, a faith walk, which we all appreciate. And again, he is a 2005 graduate of the university. So Dr. Bailey, do you want to share a little bit about your experience in love of Wilford? Dr. Bailey, before you jump in there, Natalie, can you maybe get a little closer to your uh, your microphone because you're breaking up a little bit, a uh, little distortion there. I, I, you, you know, know, we have new computers, thanks uh, to Dominion Energy, as you all know. So I just got mine installed this morning. So I'm sorry, but I sound not exactly as it needs to be. I'll put it closer. Okay, okay. Dr. Bailey, go ahead, man. Give us a, a greeting. Well, Dr. Bailey, class of 05, originally from that great state. Of, of Michigan, even though we're in the state of Ohio, got a much love and respect to my home, uh, Michigan, Detroit, Michigan. The well, because there. we're believers, we forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, they walked me today with one of our uh, teammates with an Ohio State pin. At least they didn't, they didn't. But I'm, I'm wow. excited. I'm excited to come back home. Uh, I fell in love with Little Forest. Uh, many, many years ago um, through the lens of Jack Williams who helped recruit me to come to the university to play uh, golf. And I play soccer as well. And my love and passion has always been there for the university. And I felt like the time was right right now. It was kind of like a divine revelation of just an actual perfect timing in my life, my journey, and for the university. And so I'm just appreciative of the fact that Wilberforce and Ms. Cole saw fit to allow me to come back home and we can take this thing to the next level. Perfect, perfect. So uh, Michigan is uh, your, uh, originally your home, Detroit, huh? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Oh, so that, that's, that really puts your rival with Ohio State then, doesn't it? 
absolutely, absolutely. I, mean, I didn't have roommates from Columbus. My family is from Columbus. My, you know, so some of my best friends is from Columbus. So I get it all the time. I, I can't wait to Michigan beats Ohio State one of these days. <laughs> You'll be waiting a very long time. <laughs> so, so uh, Dr. Bailey, uh, how's it feel to be back on campus, man, after so many years? Uh, I talked to my brother when I when I got the call from Ms. Coles about the position that I had received the position, and we just talked for a little bit on the phone because my brother works in higher ed. We kind of had that that Shannon Sharp, Sterling Sharp kind of vibe. I don't know if you saw that interview that that Shannon did about his brother and everything you know that my brother's done. I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to. Yeah. When my brother set the tone when he went to Howard University. Um, I began to look in, at HBCUs different, you know, because my oldest sister went to Michigan State. So everything my brother did, I want to do. And he talked about uh, being, going full circle that, you know, the kid that I remember we dropped off on 1055 North Bicken Road is now driving to 1055 North Bicken Road. And this time in, in, in a very different dynamic. And it is just uh, driving today when, when I pulled up and got out of my car, I just had to give myself a second to thank God for his grace and mercy and just to take it all in. It is a it's a feeling like no other. Amen. You know, to be able to come back in this role with a university that has provided me and my family with some wonderful opportunities. So Amen. it's always Amen. it's always great to give back, but to, to come back now in this season. Uh, for such a time like this, it's, it's, it's a blessing. Amen. So, Mrs. Natalie Coles, now, how do you feel now? Uh, you've been here, what, uh, at Wilberforce about um, two years or a little bit more than that? No, no, less than that. It's been like, I don't know, 16, 17 months, so. Oh, not quite. Yeah. But, 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 but it doesn't take long to, to feel at home, though, on, on the campus of uh, WU, though, right? No. Not at all. Everyone has been so welcoming and so kind. And, you know, I, it's funny because we also had Marilyn Gad, who is starting in our office uh, today. She's coming back. She used to work at Wilberforce. And so she began uh, this week as well. And so we're all, when I started with the university, COVID really hit not long after. And so everyone went remote. So literally today, we're all in here, like getting our offices together and you know, using that energy to say, oh, what's this? And, you know, let's go through the files. And so we're having a really good time as a team kind of learning about the office together because, you know, when I came, we really hit the ground running. We needed money. We needed to engage donors right away. We really did not have a chance to just breathe. And so it's it's been a, a ride, but it's been amazing. So talk a little bit about uh, uh, what's happening in your office now that you're, you're, you're staffed up or or staffing up and, and some of the things you got on your plate and and uh, where you think uh, this is going to uh, lead you as far as in the future as it relates to Wilberforce University. Yeah, so, you know, we have our big HLC visit that's coming up on Monday and Tuesday. So we're really laser focused on preparing for that visit. We actually have a team meeting right after uh, we, we speak with you uh, to talk about, you know, making sure that the rest of the team is up to speed and understands the direction of the advancement office. So for years, you know, we've had people kind of in and out, cycling in and out of advancement. And so it's really important that we have stability here, not only for the accreditation team, but obviously for our donor base. We want people to feel comfortable giving to the staff members who are here. And we know statistically that people give to people. Of course, they believe in Wilberforce. Wilberforce is an easy sell, so to speak. But we need them to feel comfortable and have trust in the team as well. And so I'm really excited that this team is dedicated. Dr. Bailey has been around as a student. Ms. Gad has been here before as a staff member. I've been around as a UNCF person. So it, it, it almost feels like home, feels very comfortable that we are now ready to go to our donor base share our experiences, share our love, share our willingness to be here for the long haul and to raise money. We need to raise around $5 million this year. Um, you know, that is our stretch goal. Obviously our budget goal is 2 million. We are about 1.3 million to that 2 million. Um, we actually had a really amazing April. April's not over, we're just halfway through. Today's tax day. Um, and so we're halfway through April. And we've actually raised 62% more this month than we did last year this time. 
So we're heading in the right direction. We're really a metrics focused advancement team. You know, we want to stay on those numbers. We want to be able to show everyone that we are moving in the right direction. But we need to push. We need to push because, you know, there's been a huge emphasis on HBCUs. And our board of directors has said, well, hey, there's all this buzz around HBCUs. Let's get to 5 million. And we've got quite a bit of ways to go. We do have a number of major gift requests on the table. So I am now, now that the team is in place, I'm really focused on closing our corporate partners. Um, just today, I was in communication with the NFL. We're talking about what we can do with the Cincinnati Bengals. They are interested in somehow participating in what we do here at Wilberforce. We have a $5 million request to Procter & Gamble that I'm trying to get closed. ASAP, I'd love for it to close before Monday, by the grace of God, everyone be in prayer. You know, we just want to get some of these big gifts closed so that we can exceed our goal, our stretch goal this year. I really want to exceed that stretch goal and show not only our staff and students what's possible, you know, with faith, what faith and hope can do, but also to show the community that God is for Wilberforce. And when God is for us, it doesn't matter who's against us. Well, you're right. You know, uh, over, what, 164 years plus, Wilberforce has been on on, on the, the other side of Highway 42 for over 164 years and, and God didn't bring us this far to leave us now. And so we're still gonna, you know, push ahead because that's, that's, right. that's what we do. That's yeah. what we do. So look, uh, Dr. Bailey, now, now that uh, I know, you know, you've, you've had a lot of, uh, lot of uh, time to think about how you're gonna, you know, uh, get these lumps uh, uh, squared away and, and understanding the, 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 you know, the, the need to give and, and things, how we can move, you know, the transition between undergrads and to, to the uh, alumni status. And, and, and that's not such a bad deal, you know? <laughs> so uh, tell me, what's, what's your thoughts about that? My thoughts is once the team meets, make sure I understand the vision and direction of my, uh, of my supervisor and the school to, to really dive in. I have some more meetings set up to meet the people uh, different alumni chapters. Hopefully I can have some more conversation with you um, here in the next few days about the connections, the immediate connections that I need to make now and then the council of presidents of these different chapters. And behind the scenes, already talking to the young alumni. The, the young alumni are getting excited because they see one of their own in a very key uh, position. Um, Ms. Neely did an outstanding job uh, for the university and continues to do an outstanding job for the university. But there's nothing like seeing someone that represents that came from you that was in the dorms, in the cafeteria, in your class. So a lot of the conversations I've had with alumni behind the scenes, even some I haven't had contact with in a while, it has all been very supportive. I had a great meeting with my uh, chapter brothers of Phi Beta Sigma a few days ago. And, you know, they are starting to come back home and sign up for the National Alumni Association. And they've been sending me copies of their receipts and emails. And I had a, a conversation the following day with the Zetas. So I went back to my base first. And the Zetas and Sigmas, Gamma Epsilon and Alpha Alpha is 100% behind me. I keep getting messages that they're so proud. And, you know, they know that they got to have my back, that, you know, supporting me is supporting the university. Amen. And I just love the messages across the, the different age groups that they don't want to see me fail because they know that um, Wilberforce can do great things. So they want to come back home to the university and they want to make sure that um, I succeed and me succeeding in the media is for them to sign up for the National Alumni Association. Great. So, That's perfect. Okay. That's perfect. You just had to squeeze in that. Uh, I did. <laughs> that, that five made the same. Just had to squeeze that in, didn't you? <laughs> all right, man. I, hey, I ain't mad it's at you. Good. Hey, man, it's all good. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> it's all good. That's what we got to do, man. We got to pull together, work together to make this thing work. And uh, Absolutely. The only, only way we can do it is, is get on the same path, you know, Absolutely. regardless of those colors, you know, get on that same path. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, you know the alumni association certainly you know depends a lot on on your office and and uh, and certainly here uh, you know we we depend a lot on Natalie Cole's office especially here lately uh, staying connected with us and and that's important to the to the alumni association to make certain that we got an inroad to to what's happening on campus and and certainly we'll be we'll be feeling a lot better when we finally get through this COVID nineteen where we can actually 
get back on campus and 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 press the flesh, if you will, so that uh, you know we 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 can get that 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 vibe and that jubilation back uh, as it relates to being on campus. And you know, I look forward to that. I it, it it's amazing that it's been sometimes hard to believe it's been over a year, you know, where I've been shut up, shut in, you know. So uh, you know, so hey. So now, are you back on campus? Or are you still doing the back and forth kind of thing? Me? Yes. Uh huh. I'm on campus today. Yeah, I'm on uh -huh. campus. I'm here Tuesdays and Thursdays right now. Okay. okay. So we all kind of take a day to cover to have good coverage, and uh, we have our team meetings scheduled for Wednesdays uh, remote. So we're still do, kind of doing both. It's a hybrid right now. But I'll tell you, you know, when you were talking about getting back together and getting on campus to have that feeling again. That's really the, the feeling I think we all had in the office this morning, just being together and seeing people. And, you know, because we've all been working remotely, it's, it, you get a little disconnected from the energy. So it's nice to have the energy in the room to help kind of move. No, on. no, it, it makes a lot of difference. And it's surprising when you can't do that, just the, the, the effect that it has on you uh, individually. You know, it really, it really does. I was glad to hear, though, that, you know, we're trying to uh, make some inroads with uh, some of these professional athletes. You know, it seems that seems to be the buzz, you know, around the uh, uh, around the, the continental United States, looking at what's happening in Mississippi and in Tennessee. And and so, yeah, I said, you know, it, it's it's time for us to kind of make those kind of contacts, but not but more so, you know, it's you know, we, we've got to do all that we can to uh, make the contact and bring about awareness about Wilberforce University. And, and you know, that's one of the, the purposes of this podcast is to kind of, is to profile what's actually happening on campus, as well as profile alums who are, who have walked through the doors of Wilberforce University and doing exciting and, and, and great things in their communities and helping others. And that's what we're trying to do because that helps us to just to promote the, 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 the name of Wilberforce University as well as so people can see you know who we're turning out of these out of this this university. You know who 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 are the great people that are coming out of Wilberforce University that are doing great things, and that's one of the purposes of uh, of this podcast. So, well, I, if, if I could just say, you know that that is interesting that you say that because just today, sadly, I'm not, I'm not sure if the entire alumni community is aware, um, we had a special chapel service for a student here who passed away this past weekend. No. Um, so okay. William Easton. Uh, was a senior. Um, he was getting ready to graduate. We will be honoring his life at our commencement, but we of course wanted to have a special service um, today to honor his life and to allow his professors, and he was a member of Kappa Alpha Psi, to allow his brothers to, you know, just kind of grieve and, and to have that moment with our students and staff. We do have an amazing history and legacy, and we talk about that a lot. But we also have really, and it hit me today, amazing, amazing students, individual students who, you know, may not run a major company, right? But they are amazing students and amazing people. And so I cannot wait to get donors back on campus to meet our students one-on-one. -on -one. I learned so much about this young man and his life really impacted our faculty and staff in a way I was ill-prepared to receive. Um, so, you know, we're fortunate, we're blessed, uh, but please do allow the uh, alumni uh, community to know that we have had to uh, say goodbye to one of our own this week. Okay, great. I, I didn't know that. I'm glad you uh, mentioned that to me. So, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll pass that on. And, and you know, uh, being a member of Kappa Alpha Psi myself, I, I haven't, uh, I didn't even hear it through the fraternity. So I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that to me. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, so, you know, at, at, at this point, though, um, how how is it looking as it relates to re enrollment and and recruiting coming into the fall this year? Uh, uh, how do you think that's gonna gonna work out for us? Well, we have a new assistant vice president of enrollment, Mr. James Burrell. He comes with a lot of higher ed experience. I believe he worked at Arkansas Baptist College. Yeah, that's Arkansas right. That's State. right. Um, so he has come in and he's put together a really metrics driven focus on getting students in the door. It's funny you mentioned athletes because he has come to me twice now and said, I need a football team. I need a this and a that. And so he and I are having that whole chicken or the egg conversation. But, uh, you know, we're working together 
to, to create an environment where students want to come. Well, that would put a little bit more pressure on your, your office. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Especially when my friend Eddie George went to Tennessee State. I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, well, you know, my, uh, yeah, well, yeah, you're, you're right. That's uh, guys do, they will let you down. Huh? <laughs> <They what? laughs> uh, never, never. But yeah, we, we, we are hoping to get around 685 students in the fall here on campus. We have around 484 right now. So we've got a ways to, to go. We've got to build. Um, you know, I have been learning right alongside of him about, you know, some of the benefits of Wilberforce, which is really important when we go out into the community and talk about why a private HBCU experience versus, for example, in Ohio State, which may give you, you know, more money on the onset. But the Big Ten, for example, a lot of our PWI peers have an average of a five-year graduation rate, and they're not telling students that. And so here at Wilberforce, we can get you in and out in four. That really does impact your bottom line. So we are often the more cost-effective school in the long run. So, you know, just kind of learning nuances like that, that I can share not only with the donors, but that Mr. Burrell can share with our students to make certain they understand the real value and impact of an HBCU education like Wilberforce. Yeah, no, you're right. That's, you're, you're right on. And and, you know, and when you mentioned about uh, donors getting to uh, know the students and spending some time on campus, I think that that's something that really will go a long way. Because I think, you know, when you, when you look at the students that have come through the doors, even going back to my time, just about everybody I know that came through Wilberforce and those I've uh, met and, and, and dealt with in the Alumni Association are, have become very successful individuals, you know. And it's all because of that foundation that they got while they were, you know, at the, at the Wilberforce University. Now, you know, a lot of people say, well, there's not much you can do at Wilberforce, but study. No, that's not necessarily true. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> you, can, you can do a lot more than just, just yeah. study. But, but, but my point, fun. I sure yeah, Oh, yeah, you can have some fun. <laughs> but my point is, though, you know, so many of us, it's, it's kind of amazing how so many of us that have walked down the path you know, at Wilberforce University, either it was from Schroeder Hall or the, the multiplex, you know, wherever they've had that graduation, are doing so much, so well today. You know, it's amazing. I mean, we, you, you see it all the time, you know. I know I have through the podcast where we've talked with COVID-19 about the, uh, uh, the nurse practitioner who talked about it and, and, and others. And, and then, you know, the, the entrepreneur that was on uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago that, that developed his own sh hillless shoe, you know, that goes on and on. Then our chairman, I mean, I mean, you know, we can just sit back and start talking. And then, and then the thing about it, we still don't know all of the alums who've come to the doors that are doing amazing things, you know, in, 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 in this world and in this community. And that's where we got to get, get to is so that we can really highlight, you know, and, and profile them just like the other HBCUs that you hear so much about do their lumps and we've yeah. got to do the same the same thing so well i think one of the benefits of that and, and dr bailey i don't want you to, I want you to chime in i'm sorry i can go on and on mm -hmm. but i think one of the benefits of the wilberforce education is that you do get that liberal arts left brain right brain thinking so right. you have entrepreneurial skills you're able to problem solve you are able to come into a company or start your own company and be a true thought leader you're able to look out into the world and say, let's have a heel of shoe. I mean, who does that? You know, when you have institutions where you're just kind of funneling graduates through, that doesn't happen. When you're at a place like Wilberforce, where you oftentimes have to think outside of the box because resources are limited. You know, we don't have huge endowments. Students come to us and have to have that kind of critical thinking. And so it makes them a stronger uh, employee and a stronger entrepreneur. It makes them stronger in their field of study. And it's exciting to see. And I think as soon as we're through this pandemic, you know, our corporate partners have not exactly gotten to the place where we are. We're kind of in this hybrid model. Um, and a lot of schools are around the nation, but I think corporations are afraid of being sued. And so their employees are not going back until July, August is what I'm being told. But we have invited a lot of our corporate partners out. Come do a work day. Come plant flowers. Come help us spruce up the dorms. You know, come do this or that. Because once they're here, they will see what we've all seen and they will also be believers. Absolutely. Right, right. That's a, that's a, 
That's a great point. It's, it's totally different when you can put somebody up front, you know, on the on the property, on the land here at the beautiful campus to especially dive into the culture and meet with the students and the staff to get that to get that feeling to get a true sense of what's going what's going on. It, it can change the minds and the hearts. And back to the alumni, it's a it's a generation of younger alumni too that I would love to connect you with, Brother Stafford, that are doing some amazing things. We got a young man, Monte Washington, who played here basketball, and he's on uh, the show called Brothers on BET, Tyler Perry show, um, and he's a graduate here. We have Remy Williams, who is the drummer for Summer Walker. A few weeks ago, they was over at um, Puff Daddy House. So we have um, Charity, who's down in Georgia, that's doing amazing things as a, as a young Black woman in film, right? So it's so many alumni out there, like you said, that's doing amazing things. We just got to create a, a, a holistic atmosphere to help draw them back and to come back home, like I like to say, and, um, and be a part of this, to tell their story of Wilberforce and their connections that could be potential donors um, as well. So the greatest selling part is somebody who can tell the story of Wilberforce. You know what? That that that's right. That's right on. I'm glad you brought those names up because you know you're gonna you're gonna be my 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 focal point for getting those young alums. You know where we can profile them as well because that's that's one of the keys is to let others know that you know we're we're just not an association of uh, seasoned members. You know we got everybody and we can learn from each other and and the young alums got 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 things that are going on that can help us and vice versa. And that's what we got to do. Just, just like in your fraternity, man, you know, I don't, I don't know, you know, I know you've dealt with the issue of, uh, uh, you know, young uh, uh, members yeah. wanting, to, wanting to do certain things and older members saying, ah, no, you got to sit by the door and all that kind of thing. But, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, so, you know, but where we got to get, man, where we got to get at Wilberforce University and, and the Alumni Association is being able to 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 have that that balance, I think is the right word. That balance between both, and neither one is more important right. than the other. Because we all what we all graduated from Wilberforce University, so we all. Of, it's kind of that same culture feel, you know. And yeah. where that what's coming ahead, but still looking back and embracing, and how we can bridge the gaps and and be able to tell our short stories, share our stories, and and work towards the greater good. Everybody wants to see Wilberforce succeed. That's right. And I think at times what gets lost in the shuffle is, you know, our passion can sometimes oh, cause yeah. a little separation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, you oh, know, yeah. as we know in sports, there's multiple ways to score a touchdown. And right. So we just have to, you know, everybody be on board and be great teammates with one another. Right. Right on. Right on. And, you know, one, and I'm not, you know, I know we've been on here. I know we've been close to 30 minutes now. So we, <laughs> we need to try to you know, draw it to a close. But, you know, the, the, the term I use is, uh, I hear, you know, at, at Wilberforce, I think Dr. Pinkett uses is, is, is a, a school of, of uh, promise yeah. uh, the students. I like to use it, it it's, it's, it's students of potential. Mm -hmm. And what Wilberforce does is they pull that potential out of those students where they, they recognize that they, they can contribute and they have something to offer the world. And that's what Wilberforce University does so well, you know, so well. Absolutely, because I was dropped off and you know, I had, I had great potential. I was really rough around the edges, and it took a, a Carol Bernardino, it took a Alfreda Hughes, it took a Jack Williams, it took uh, um, a, a few other people to, you know, get me together, straighten me out, and, and different things of that nature. So I owe a lot to the Moses Griffin, you know. To oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know Moses, yeah. <laughs> Moses Griffin did. Yeah. I think that that was a man that did not. Now, you, now you're reaching way back now. <laughs> he did the right credit. He deserved that time. I know that you know, but Moses Griffin was a great asset. He was at, you know, this was my position, my role, but I'm here to support everybody. Yeah, yeah you're reaching back now. Somebody yeah. else told me to mention their name to you, too. Dwight Cass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cass is here. player. Yeah, Dwight Cass. Uh, down in Atlanta, those Atlanta alumni are doing some amazing things. Yeah, yeah, now, especially yeah. young with the white was a was a great young man. Uh, played basketball here. He was very involved in different stuff. He was excited. He hit me up and talked about how excited he was that I that I took the position. He was. They were saying that they had me on their mind, but they didn't know if I would be interested in coming back to Wilberforce. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. 
Well, well, before since we've been visiting here with Mrs. Natalie Cole, Vice President of Institutional Advancement, and Dr. Albert Bailey, the new director. Amen. The new director of Alumni Affairs. Okay, y'all, y'all loves who, who 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 will view this podcast. Make sure you log in on them. You know, sink in on them because that's the man that's going to be working with us primarily uh, as we go down this path of uh, alumni association. So. In parting, before we leave, uh, offer us, give us some parting words, uh, uh, Natalie, if you'd start, and then Dr. Betty, as we conclude, uh, anything you want to leave with the alums or the students, whatever, you know. Well, I would just ask, honestly, for your prayers. Uh, we do go into the HLC visit Monday and Tuesday. This is a big visit for us, and we need the entire campus community praying for the, the institution and for us to be successful and to finally, once and for all, just turn the, turn the page on this. I just want to thank you all for all that you do, not only your financial support, but your emotional support that you've given to me and the team during this time. Thank you for being, you know, just such huge advocates for the work that we do and for our students and uh, faculty. So I just appreciate you all so much. And I can't wait to, to the day when I can see you face to face. Dr. Bailey, any, any parting words? Yeah, uh just a favorite quote of mine by Robert Frost out of a book, Stopping by the Woods. On a snow evening, he says, but I have uh, miles to go before I sleep. No, he was but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. Miles to go before I sleep. And in that story, that, that word he wrote, he didn't talk about where he was going, but he knew that he couldn't stop where he was at. And so uh, alumni, it's time to come back home. We, we have a job to do. We can't sit on the sideline. We need everybody in the game because we have promises to keep that we took those vows, that oath at graduation, when we stood up wherever you graduated from, and we made a promise to uphold uh, Wilberforce University in all things. So uh, we have promises to keep them. Amen. You know, amen. That's all I can say. Look, I appreciate y'all spending some time with me. It's been great. Uh, you know, and uh, let's uh, let's keep it in the middle of the road. God bless you and much success as we move this university forward. Thank you and uh, we'll see you later. Thank you.